Camaro too. Olympic alternate, his work ethic is incredible, his wrestling is incredible. I think he has all the tools that are necessary and I think he's a great leader. The opportunity for all of us to do what we started fighting to do is right in front of us. We gotta stick together. We yeah, do, for sure. Time, you know? yeah, we're a team, we're a family. If we gotta put it on one of these guys, we're gonna put it on one of them. Hell yeah. I know when I step in the cage with one of them, you know, I'm trying to take something home. The rivalry between the Black Zines and American Top Team, it's just when you have two teams in close proximity like that, there's definitely tensions gonna brew. Wow. This thing is huge, man. Right. When I saw the opposite team for the first time, you definitely suck in. Or just you go through a roller coaster of emotion. These are guys that you are going to fight. The initial reaction was a little bit of awkwardness, tension, competitiveness. You could tell everybody was semi-sizing each other up, but at the same time, not necessarily trying to be seen sizing the other up. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Five rounds in the US. At the Black Zines, we have a ton of superstars. We've produced guys such as Anthony Johnson. A lot of guys don't realize how destructive he is in that cage. Be aggressive, AJ. Oh, Just missed. Oh, 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 oh. Gotta be careful. And he went high with the kick. Gustafson trying to take down trouble. It was just, you know, tore him apart. Anthony Rumble Johnson as advertised. To see Anthony go from being cut to destroying Gustafsson and fighting for the title is amazing. What's up, man? You're up nice and early most mornings, huh? Yeah, I can't sleep past 7.30. I have an idea of who I think ATT is gonna put out. Watching how they carry themselves, how they eat. I was almost confident that Michael Graves was going to be their first pick. And then Nathan Coy started to emerge. I'll fight as many times as I am needed for this team. I'll go all 12 in a row, ready to bang. I wanted to look at each one of them in the face and let them know that we're here to fight. This is our city, this is our state, our world. Man, America top team is number one. All right, so we made um, some charts of all the ATT guys, the records of the people that they fought. You just need to go through who's going to be in the first fight. We're looking at everything under control. Tonight we had a meeting with the coaches that are here and George Santiago and Greg Jones who are in Sweden for Anthony Johnson's fight. Buscapé is the best option because he has more experience than anyone over there. More importantly, I think we need someone that's going to have a lot of poise for that first fight. Someone that's not going to shy away from the bright lights and the cameras and things like that. Kamaru, I think he neutralized the wrestler really well. Right now is probably the best time to fight him because it's early. I think we should at least talk to him about it, right. see what's what. You want to get Kamaru? He might have some very serious feelings on what he'd rather do. Um, 
Hey, come on, my assistants. Can you guys roll down? What's poppin'? Would you want to be fight? Want to fight this early? What What do you really think in your heart? You can go to the first fight. Let's do it. You want to do first fight? Yeah. Great. We picked tomorrow for the first fight because we knew we could handle it. Whether they go with a strike or or with a tall wrestler, Kamar could break anybody. You can put your best guy in there, and Kamar's gonna break him. Kamar never walks in there thinking he's gonna lose. I think that Kamar will get it done and it's gonna be a two-round decision. He's gonna ground upon him out. The fire is there, and it's just waiting to jump it off. So we went over, we spoke with George and with Greg in Sweden, and decided that Kamara was gonna fight the first fight. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you guys know that this is secret. Deception is the name of the game. Someone else should act like they're getting ready for the fight so that they can't figure out who they get ready for. No matter what was talked about before, about when you're gonna go or when you like to fight, be ready to fight at all times. Because if they throw something in there as far as a different strategy or, or they have a little bit momentum or whatever the case may be, we gotta be able to counteract that by putting a likely challenger up to someone they may have. As a fighter, we all know the physical is the easier part. We do this every day. We can do this in our sleep. But it's that six inches right between the ears, mentally. You're here to win. You're here to show the UFC that you belong here. I hope that hits home for them in a way that kind of ignites that fury, ignites that hunger. I definitely want to be that guy to energize the team, getting this rolling. Everybody knows once a boat is rolling down the hill, it's almost impossible to stop. Black Zillion on five. On five? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Black Zillion! Father, I just want to thank you for another day of life, the gift you blessed me with. Father, I pray that you continue to bless my family, my father, my mother, my brother, my sister, my daughter. Thank you for everything you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I was born in Nigeria. I was there to about eight years old, raised in Arlington, Texas. As a wrestler, I competed in college. I was chasing the Olympic dream, and so I moved over to Colorado Springs at the Olympic Training Center to pursue that dream. At a certain point, he decided that he just wanted to convert over to MMA. So he left the Olympic Training Center to be part of our team. And Rashad Evans opened up his heart and his house, and he moved in there. <laughs> I'm fighting for my, my future, my life, my family's future. I'm fighting for financial security for my daughter. What fight are you ready? As a fighter, I love to compete. I would go through hell to win this fight. Come on. That Nigerian nightmare. Ooh, smile. team might have expected Luis Buscape to be the first guy, but the problem that they're running into now is the fact that we're putting me out. And so whoever they put up, I will beat on him for two rounds. I'm gonna take him down and I'm gonna beat him up. Or if he wants to stand, I'm gonna beat him up. So they've kind of ran into a no-win situation this first fight. Guys, get here, get here, come here, come here. All right, first fight, now home. We gotta make sure we're gonna deliver. I know you guys can make, you know? Today is all about this way in. It's all about Kamaro. It's all about the support to Kamaro. It's all about us all taking our energy and giving it to him. My teammates have what it takes to beat anybody here on their team. All right, let's bring it in. We're good, but it's our house. Guys, that's right? cool. Right. It is our house. It is our house. One, two, three. Let's let's see. See. I don't feel pressure at all. I'm just ready to go out there and, and get the ball rolling. This is the fight that's going to set the tone for how the season is going to be.
Welcome to the first weigh-in. We have Dan from the American Top Team, and we have Glenn from the Black Zillions. Who will represent your team for the first fight? Please step forward. Step up, Graves. Let's go, Mikey. Get it. I was a little surprised I didn't go with Boost Coupe because he's got a lot of experience and also brings a similar game where he's going to try to get on top and control. But uh, I think it's a good fight for Mike. I think Mike matches up well with all those guys, which is why we picked him first. American top team, step up to the scale. You'll be first to weigh in. <laughs> Michael Graves is probably the top three most talented guys on their team. He's a very tough wrestler. He's fearless, and he will definitely go out there and try to make something happen. But I'm not going to accept defeat. 170. Black Zillion fighter, step up to the scale. As far as the dangers that Cameroon has, he's an athletic wrestler. He doesn't have too much power behind his punches. He uses his punches really to just set up his takedowns. 170. He's really looking to just secure time, but Graves is a very dynamic fighter. We have tons of confidence in him, and uh, we know he's gonna get the job done. Okay, fighters, step up. Go <laughs> face off. As I look at this thing, I look at the Black Zillions, and they're bringing in a really good wrestler in Usman. I think that they're looking to come in, push a guy against the fence, or lay on top of him, and get that easy two-round win. The American top team seems to have a better strategy. They're bringing in a guy who's a good wrestler, he's got good submissions, and he's a striker. He can win anywhere, but you never know. We'll see how this thing plays out. It seemed like Michael Graves did not want to make eye contact with Kamaro, and Kamaro was just doing his thing. He's got that factor that says, I don't care who you are, I don't care what you bring, I'm going to beat you. Michael Graves is a great stand-up guy, but he ran into the wrong guys. If he's smart and if his coaches have told him about me, he knows about me. He knows what I possess, the type of skills that I possess. And he knows that I'm a direct counter for the style that he fights and the way he fights. Michael Graves has got some strong stand-up and he's got some quick submission skills, but he's still young and has to tie it all together. He hesitates and timing is the key. As long as you could time a fight with him properly, he'll beat Michael Graves. I'm gonna do as I do. I'm gonna take him down. I'm gonna finish him probably first round. Or he's gonna just cut out a two round beating. He's gonna go one sided. They have to come out right away out of the gates and throw out their strong guy and bring the home gym advantage back to their side. Unfortunately, they're facing me, and there's no way I'm letting them take it back over. What's this dude like? <laughs> wrestler. Wrestler who likes to kick. That should be easy work, then, if he just want to kick. You know, let's, let's see him kick from that back foot. Yeah. I've studied every guy on their roster. Michael's definitely a talented kid, don't get me wrong. And he's very good at controlling the distance and the range against lesser opponents. But I'm not a lesser opponent, and I'm going to go in there and definitely show that. Obviously to them, Cameroo is probably their biggest, baddest wrestler, and we're looking for Mike to take him down and crush him and just make a statement to their whole team. You and him. This first fight's important. It may only be 25 points, but you know there's a lot more than that riding on it. Usman's not the most polished guy from an MMA standpoint because he's still a young guy, and that's the type of guy that could get into trouble against somebody like Graves. If you stay close, he can't get you, okay? There's not a doubt in my mind that the Black Zillions are not gonna be victorious. But there's a bunch. Dan might not wanna face it, and he could talk all kinds of smack, but I can guarantee you we will be the ones that will be smiling, and Dan's gonna be telling you why they lost. ATT will go home with sorrow on their face. It's a fact, it's an absolute fact. better at what I do than he is at what he does. This is what I've earned. I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna take care of business and I'm gonna come out and say, guys, that's how you get it done. Now let's keep going. ATT, 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 
ATT. The energy inside that gym, I've never seen anything like it. They're chanting, they're cheering, they're going crazy. Tremendous amount of pressure on these fighters that have to go in and perform and win for their team. Kamaru is a really good wrestler, and Graves is a stand-up fighter. Graves is undefeated, but he's never gone in against a guy with these type of wrestling credentials. So this is the classic wrestler versus striker, and we'll see how this thing plays out. Jump, jump, show you fresh, you fresh, you fresh. Be ready, be ready, be ready. No third round. We have the judge's decision. Judge one scores the five, 20 to 18. Judge two scores the five, 20, 18. Judge three scores the five, 19, 19. The winner on a majority decision Camaro. They came out in round one. We expected Uzman to be pushing for the takedown. We thought that Graves would have the better stand up. 
stand-up was actually pretty even. Get your hands, your hands up! Michael was landing some kicks and Kamara was countering with some hooks. Kamara ended up landing a takedown. Michael got back to his feet, clinched up a bunch of times, but Kamara basically controlled the entire round. I thought he was much wrestling, you know, pulled that round out for him. Come out in round two, more of the same on the stand-up. It was back and forth. Uzman hit a couple takedowns, but wasn't able to control Mike on the ground. Nice. Mike sprawled on a takedown late in the round, was able to get Uzman's back. We thought he had it locked in there at one point. Michael had his back, but Kamara was patient. We weren't really too worried because we know that Kamara knows how to defend himself on the ground. So Kamara shook him off, landed in side control, bunch of nice ground and pound, and that's the way the round ended. After the result, I feel content. I'm happy with what it's doing for my guys to go out there and get the first fight and set the tone that, no, we're not gonna lie down for you. We're gonna fight. I'll knock all you out. I'm next. You, I'll knock all you out, bro. What? I'm next. What? I'm next. I'll go again. I'll go again for you. Go ahead and tell I'm next. In the cage. I'm next. In the cage. One of these guys fought like they really wanted to win this fight. They both fought like, ah, I'll do just enough to barely win or just enough to barely lose. I'm looking for guys that are gonna go in and go for broke. This is the first fight you're trying to win for your team. You're trying to get the first win. Bring this fight back to your home gym. Get that home gym advantage. These kind of fights frustrate me. Our house is number one, and we'll do it again. Fire screaming trash. I'm next. I'm next. What do you mean? You're next to lose? I said he was next. So tomorrow, go again. <laughs> you look good. You look good. This was the plan for me to come in here and get my team going, get that first big win. This is hopefully gets my team fired up, gets some momentum going, and we just keep it rolling. Rest, recover, repeat. Today, today we celebrate. What's up, bro? Good morning. Tell you what, the energy in your guys' place was was thick, huh? <laughs> you have no idea. I give uh, both you guys, you know, props, you, you and Mikey, for being the first guys. I feel the psychological warfare going on. You know, we, we are playing mind games with each other, and that's what you got to do with a guy like this. Pressure will break him. I'm next. I'll go again. I'll go again for you. I'm next. In, in the cage. I'm next. In my opinion, Cameroon is nothing special. You know, we got better teammates, we got better wrestlers, and his striking is extremely, extremely average. And I, have, I see huge holes in his game where I'm gonna knock him out. There ain't no other sport in the world, bro. <laughs> you know? To be able to fight in the presence of such badasses, man. You know, like, that alone, that never, never, never happens, man. You know, and like, uh, that alone gives you that extra uh, little oomph just to, you know, I hope before the show is over, we get to uh, mix it up. I got, I got nothing but respect, man. You too, man. I personally do not play into the psychological warfare going on in the house. That's extra expenditure of energy that I don't need to do. Some guys, they love to do that. Some guys can get another guy's head by doing that. That's just not a strategy that I choose to partake in. To a warrior like yourself and a warrior like me, I feel like we could put on a hell of a performance, man. I definitely believe he's a bit overzealous because he hasn't fought yet. And I see a huge hole in his game. He's a decent striker. Wrestling's a bit suspect. Ground game's a bit suspect. Yeah, man. 
We'll see you guys on Friday. <laughs> Round two. Again. And then he's like, hey man, I, I hope uh, me and you get the chance to really mix it up. And That's you know, funny. I told you he tried to find it. And I thought about it. I'm like, I'm like, I was like, I'm, this guy just makes it hard to what like, what am I? Do I like you? Do I hate you? What what is it? You're running from me. That's what it is. Game against the cage, I'll foot stomp the yeah. out of that way. Yeah. Make sure he can't even push off the throw punch. Well, I told him we're gonna fight, and he said, let's do it. I said, all right, I'm gonna get my first fight next week or the week after. As soon as I knock out their, their first guy, I'm gonna go up to Cameroon, and I'm saying, I want you next. Guess what? I have answers for all that Yo, I know. It'll make him desperate, though. I have a lot, of, get him have a lot of answers for him, bro. I don't know what, what was going on, because I wasn't there with you know, what, what they said. I don't want to think about it. I just want to fight, and that's it. I'm gonna put my fist on his face, and I'm gonna pick Day. I'm gonna say we're gonna pick up. We're either fighting on Tuesday or we're fighting on Friday. You pick the day and I'll see you in the cage. Hey, am I gonna fight you? No, I'm fighting that bitch ass. I'm gonna knock his bitch ass out. I like the way you think. For you, you go here, boom, boom. You see? Do the drill right! I'm telling you. Do the Drill right. Hey. I'm just telling you. Hey. 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 That plus a combination of lack of sleep just overwhelmed me and boiled over and I just lost control. Man. That's on me, man. Ain't nothing though, so. Yeah, happens. Yeah, for each other. That's an infestation that we don't want in the team to tear us apart from the inside out. And right now we have a good streak going and we want to continue to keep that streak going and that that stems from us being so closely bonded together. Somebody up Gonna start on my count, a left, right kick. Kick, kick, okay? At this point in the competition, when you're walking into four hard fights right in a row, you need to be comfortable, confident, and relaxed. I feel that we need some of this experience as we close up this competition. I want your opinion on tomorrow. He's, uh, he's uh, mentally ready for the fight. Uh, he's good to go. Kamara won the first fight. Hundred percent confidence in Kamara's ability as an athlete and as a wrestler and as a fighter. So we want to lead with him. First one, the last four, in my opinion, is the most important. Sets a tone, and we want to bring it back home. So we want you to uh, represent that. Take it back home for us. I don't know if I want to be the first one. I don't believe it. Wow, he's smiling. <laughs> yeah, let's go do this. F that. I'm happy that I'm going to fight again. I'm here, and I'm going to seize the moment, and I'm going to capitalize on this opportunity. Whether they go with a wrestler or the striker, we believe Camaro can handle it. Camaro's gonna take us out on the first fight of the 100 point rounds, and he's going to uh, bring us back home. Body kick, step back. This is what I've planned for my future. This is what I've trained so hard for. I've proven that I can go in there and I can deliver for my team. And so in order to be able to ensure my spot in the UFC, and also to just make a better life for my family. I'm telling you, watch. Me and him become sparring partners. He don't think so. What's up, man? Glenn brought us out to chill out at the training. So I want to let you know how much we all appreciate everything you guys did. And I haven't been able to do something for all of you guys yet, but your family is right there.
wow, I get to see my little baby. And it was definitely a good moment. I know I have only two more weeks here, but that's something that you really feel me. All I'm doing is for them. <laughs> When I was younger, I used to go to Hong Kong. My kids were born, and I was supposed to come back like two weeks later, or a week later, I'd come back like five weeks later. So I know exactly what it's like. It's a tough feeling to be apart from your kids. Once they arrived, my, I see my son, it was, I wanted to cry, but oh, yeah. I was just so flooded with, with happiness that um, I couldn't cry. You know, Glenn, you get an A plus for that one. You know, for me to be gone for a whole month without her not knowing. Um, it was tough, it's tough. For me. And I can, can't imagine what it is for her. I think it reassured our guys that of why we were here and why we're doing this. I love the fact that we're gonna go into their dirty ass gym. We're gonna go and take it back from them in their house. And we're gonna just crush the morale even more. Right now we haven't lost control. We're just gonna go back to their gym, see their gym one more time. We're gonna bring it back and we're gonna close it out in our gym. We're back within striking range. It's, it's 200 to 100. Hyder came through for us again, got it back to our gym. So uh, we really want to keep it here. OK, welcome to the ninth weigh-in in the welterweight division. We have Dan with the American top team. We have Glenn with the Black Zillions. Glenn, if you picked your representative, please have him step forward. Kamara is 100% confident in himself. I don't have a doubt in my mind that we're going to win this fight. You can put your best guy in there, and Kamara's going to break him. Dan, if you picked your representative, have him step forward. Good girl. We think Steve Curl matches up pretty well against Boozman. He's good at taking back. He's good at looking for chokes during takedowns. He's got a good guillotine game, good Peruvian necktie. So we're going to go with Steve, and we're going to hope he comes in there hard and throws caution to the wind and looks for a neck. Okay, we'll have the Black Zillions weigh in first. One seventy. Okay, American top team. The last time Steve Carl fought, he, he didn't make weight. 171 and three quarter. I was three quarters of a pound over. Hopefully going into this fight, he does the right things, he makes the weight, because last time it, it took a serious toll on him and he lost the fight. <laughs> this one's important. He has to win this fight for the American top team. One seventy-one and a quarter. They come in a miss weight again, quarter pound. I'm thinking, really? Of course, Steve Carl came in overweight, just like before. We didn't expect Steve Carl not to make weight again. He's a quarter of a pound over. I would have expected Carl to learn the hard way. 171. Yeah. Wow, that was close. Good job, Carl. You know those guys at American Top Team had to be in their pants when he comes in a quarter pound overweight. They're lucky all he had to do was take off his shorts and he made the weight easily. Fighters step up for a face-off, right here in the front. As far as Steve Carl, I've studied every one of the guys that ATT has put up. I know Steve Carl is a very tough opponent, tough grappler. He was a wrestler in high school, so he takes crappy shots. Most guys in MMA aren't wrestlers. 
Kamar carries himself around basically like he's the man and nobody can touch him, but uh, I don't think he's half the wrestler that he thinks he is. And I'm going to go out there tomorrow and I'm going to put him to sleep in the first round. Back to your line. Steve Carl is a very good wrestler, but so is Kamara. So Kamara's takedown defense is incredible, extremely strong. It's not going to be an easy fight before Steve Carl. We'll see you tomorrow. Good luck. I believe training has come a long ways from just, you know, spending hours and hours and hours and hours training. We have decided to put investment into technology. When I use my motion capture cameras, by having two people spar, I could show you over your last 10 sparrings every time you've made a mistake. I mean, you're not turning over your hand enough where I could say, okay, you've done every time you do this, you do this. If there's something that they do repetitively, I can write an algorithm to pick up on that repetitive motion. The goal is to make sure that we take training centuries ahead of where everyone else is. What I'm doing is using a mobile 3D scanner to capture the fighters so that it'll actually see what problems he's having or if he could be doing something more efficiently. Okay, now I get that thing. It could benefit the fighters by allowing them to recuperate faster and train harder. We're able to identify how fast, how far their body angles are moving, every joint on your body. I know I have a fight lined up. Mentally, I'm preparing for my fight. I'm sparring, I'm training as hard as I can. There you go. But for the coaches, it's something for them to use as a tool. And so we're headed towards the right direction, coming closer and closer to the fight. He's got a real strong ground game and... Cross. Fast recovery, boom. This fight is extremely significant to not just for me, but for our guys. I told my coaches, I said, hey, if we ever got in that situation to where morale was starting to come down a little bit and they brought the fight back to their house, I want to be that guy that you put in. Kamaro is a well-rounded fighter. He's a classically trained wrestler, but he's been training his stand-up a long time. He's won all most of his fights by TKO. My prediction for the fight is Kamaro Usman is going to win by ground and pound. This is a big one. I'm fighting a wrestler. I'm gonna take him down, I'm gonna beat him up. I'm gonna take him down, I'm gonna finish him probably the first round. He's gonna just cut out a two round beating and it's gonna be a two round decision. There's no one that can stop me, no one that can beat me. The way that I wanted to end my second fight and that is by knockout. Standing. Time to go.
Judges scored the same way, 18-20. The winner is Usman. Time to go. Round one, Kamara hit him right away. They exchanged back and forth a few times. Kamara got him against the fence, took him down, did some ground and pound. Steve had no control over round one whatsoever. Guzman really pushed the pace. He was more aggressive. He took Steve down a couple of times. We weren't going in there looking for a decision. We were hoping that Guzman was going to expose something and Steve was going to grab it. Steve's pretty good at looking for necks and taking backs, and Cameron didn't give him any openings. No. The second round was more of the same. He came out there, he took Steve down when he wanted to take him down. At one point, Steve looked for it a couple of times. Cameron did a good job of defending it. Kamara had the edge in the stand-up. He had the edge in the wrestling. Steve Carlo has like 25 fights. Kamara has six. I think the proof is in the pudding. Steve had nothing for him. Today's performance was kind of what I, I wanted. I, I, I still felt a little tight in there. I, I could have let go a lot more. I really, really wanted to finish that fight. I like the fact that it takes a guy like that, a former world champion, to be able to pull the best out of me. I'm not super confident yet, so I'm like, you know what? Let's not burn his arms out. Homie, that first jab, yo, man, you threw up the whole rest of his fight. Tonight we're at the Versace Mansion in Miami Beach. I took our guys here as a thank you for everything that they have done to train and prepare. <laughs> One last deep breath before the final hard push that we have to do. Let's make a toast. Hey, we started this journey together. We went through the camp. We grinded every day, even though we didn't want to early in the mornings, and we got it done. And we're almost here. You know, we can almost smell that victory, you know? And so we gotta finish strong. We push hard, we go ahead and knock them out and sweep them. We finish together, and we'll reach our goals together. Hey, all right, all right, all right. just all right. tell us. Like this. Thank so much. Cheers. Cheers. Don't break my breath. <laughs> Look for the hard group. Hey, hey, fall good. Anything could happen, it's an MMA fight. Anything could happen. I'm proud of Baby, he fought as hard as he could. But we gotta win one of the next two fights. Are we gonna stop now? We're not putting any more boards up for what scores, and we're not bringing any more cigars in to celebrate, because we didn't win. We didn't win! We'll celebrate when we win! Not today, when this is over! When this is over! Is, is it over and I didn't, didn't, someone didn't tell me? It's not over. Oh. People are checking out. It's not over. 
We still got two guys that we need to support, that need to fight. The last fight is just as important as my fight, as the first fight when we started. It's not over. I see every, some guys playing, some guys checking out, some guys want to do this, do that. It's not over, guys. I'm pretty sure ATT feel like they had the momentum going on their side, and they still could win the whole thing. I felt like, you know, a couple of my teammates, they done checked out, like, everything is all done, and some of them lost their hunger. They feel like this is all over, but me, I, I'm hungry for every little thing. Did you come 90% to give it up now? If we lose now, do you know how devastating it will be for everyone in this room? So we are gonna go back like it's day one. You can cut the tension with a knife. It's definitely very intense when it's just us. The situation's hot. You know, it's a it's a pressure cooker in this house. Jason was talking about how to pull in his hair. So I was like, well, we could say the same thing about Kamaru grabbing the cage when he was about to get taken down. I, I grabbed the cage? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I grabbed the cage? Like, he I was, I was taking him down. I, know, he, I just know he said that. Everybody else was sitting out here eating. Come on, man, that can't happen. That can't go down right now because every little, Everything right now, well, all they want is just a little bit of unity and you know, anything that, to help to pick up their spirits. So, mm -hmm. you know, we can't give them any of that right now. I'm not gonna allow my team to be disrespected in any way, shape, form, or fashion. You know, and guys are running their mouth or guys are saying this. You know, as a team captain, I think the team's gonna look to me as of what, what can we do and which direction we can take this. And so I have to let them know that this is how we handle it. So you wanna talk to me about I don't know, is that what y'all mean? You know, you put my name in your mouth. Something you want to talk to me about? When your boy was saying, talk about him pulling his hair or whatever, I was like, he's like, that was a dirty fight. I was like, okay, so that was like Usman holding the, the cage? Me holding the cage? You didn't hold it? Oh, I must have been seeing that. Was you watching the fight, the same fight I was, I was in? I was right there. I ain't got nothing to argue with you about, bro. Exactly. You're gonna, you're gonna see the fight. So if you have nothing to say, see... keep my name out your mouth. Okay. You didn't hold the cage. Keep my name out your mouth. You didn't. You didn't hold the cage. Hey, keep my name out your mouth. That's what I'm cage. saying. You, you know, didn't hold the cage. If you have nothing to say, keep my name out your mouth. You didn't hold the cage. Period. You didn't hold the cage. What's the Bahamasi? He's kind of stepped up as the team. Don't be talking. Because I would never back down from fighting you. Ain't nobody talk. I would never back down from fighting you. Ain't nobody. Ain't nobody talk. You know. I'm, I'm just gone. letting you know. Okay. You running your mouth. Listen, guys. Period. I ain't running my mouth. I'm letting you know right now. If you were in the kitchen, I would have pointed it out right then and there. But dude, you weren't. Dude. So don't so say what? that I'm yeah, not a man. I'm fighting. Bro, I'll fight you any no, day. I ain't say you don't were say that. What? what? Why you get. Don't get loud. Hey, because don't, I'll get loud. What I want. He thinks I'm scared of him. Is a blanket. You know? I will knock him the out. I do not like Usman. He's a boring ass fighter. Has no threats whatsoever. Watch the video. When you see the fight. All right. And you let me and know. Let All me I'm know. saying is keep my name out your and mouth. And let me know if you held the cage or not. Keep my name out your mouth. We'll get we'll get our shot. We'll get our shot. What you talking about? We'll we'll fight one day, bro. Man, shut your mouth, man. Shut your mouth, boy. First of all, Vincente had a great fight, hands down. The guy did an awesome job. He's a warrior. He proved he's got heart. He did an incredible job against Nate Coy. He did a great job against Haider Hassan. But taking the emotion out of it, who is the best guy to fight a single fight in the finale? I got Vincente. Vincente, what do you got? I got Vincente. You know, it's a hard one for me because um, I like Camaro, but you can't deny Vincente. You know, I mean, he's just... He's getting better and better from the time he started to where he is right now. If we base it off of merit and who won, then then it's Kamaru because he he has won two fights. He's not feeling against Kamaru. We love Kamaru. No, I know it's nothing against Kamaru. I know every it's, it's not about. I know you guys are stating who you think from a fighter position, and so am I. I know it's nothing personal. I just think Kamaru, I think just matchup wise, I'm talking. You make the call still.
Good afternoon, guys. How are you? Good. Congratulations to the American Top Team. You guys win the $200,000. Good job, guys. It's been an amazing competition. Not over yet, though. The owners will pick a fight for the big finale on the show. And the winner of that fight wins a Harley Davidson motorcycle, the $300,000, and the tough trophy this season. Have you guys picked your fight? We have. All right, Glenn, why don't you go first? Who's your fighter? Come on. Pretty much went against everyone. I went in the end with Camaro, and I did it because I just felt stylistically Camaro's wrestling is going to overpower whoever they put up. Dan, who'd you pick? Hyder Hassan. Man, you know, this, this is gonna be an exciting fight. It's, it's gonna go one of two ways. You know, either Kamaru's gonna get his takedowns and control Hyder over three rounds, or he's not, and Hyder's gonna hit him and hurt him and finish him. Square off, boys. Clutch, brother. Usman versus Hassan. In my opinion, they couldn't have picked a better fight. Obviously, both guys are undefeated in the competition, and more importantly, they do not like each other. These guys have been talking smack the entire season, hoping that they could face each other and what better place to do it than the finale. This is a fight that it's, it's been in the making since day one. There ain't no other sport in the world, bro. Actually, it happened before we came in the house. I've seen Hyder fight another one of my teammates before. David is landing some cleaner shots. There's another one! He's out. He's out. He's out. And he, he got the better of that. Slowly from then on to the first fight. I'm next! You saw I'm not gonna do, bro. I'll go again. I'll go again for you. And right there, it was born. I hope before the show is over, we get to uh, mix it up. After that fight was over, I didn't like him like trying to flex on me. I yelled, that's not gonna happen to me, and I'm gonna knock you and all your teammates out. I'm his worst nightmare. Well, I told him we're gonna fight, and he said, let's do it. I said, all right, let's get him against the cage. I'll foot stomp out of that yeah. leg. Make sure he can't even push off the throw punch. I definitely believe Hyder's a bit overzealous, but he calls himself the Hulk. <laughs> Only the Hulk is going to be the guy that gets smashed. It's going to be the battle of the Nigerian nightmare versus the Arabian assassin, and uh, we're going to get at it. I've told my team I'm going to go out there and I'm going to deliver, and I'm going to go out there, and that's what I do is I deliver. You know, this thing is far from over, and we're excited about the last fight. Both sides think they have their best guy going, and I expect a hell of a fight. From the world-famous Las Vegas Strip here in the great state of Nevada, we welcome you live. Kamaru Usman is an outstanding wrestler, great athlete, but he's evolving everywhere. You know, living with Rashad Evans and training every day at Black Zillions, he's growing each and every day. It all comes down to this, the Black Zillions, Kamaru Usman unbeaten on the Ultimate Fighter, now his sights are set on American top teams, Haider Hassan. This is my destiny, and not even Haider Hassan can stand in the way of that. I'm next! You are all not enough. I'm a confidence buster, and once I connect, it's a game over. I will not get for you! In this fight, Haider thinks it's gonna be a war, but that's what he thinks. This fight means the world to me. This is everything that I've worked for. Nothing can stop me from the goal that I want. So many things that motivate me, but my family has to be number one. This fight with Hyder, it's gonna go wherever I want the fight to go. If I want it to stay standing, it's gonna stay standing. The 28-year-old Nigerian Kamaru Usman taking on the 32-year-old American Hyder Hassan. Usman two inches taller, far more pronounced in the reach department where Usman has a six-inch advantage. Kamaru, the Nigerian nightmare! All right, gentlemen, we've been over rules. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. We're gonna have a clean fight. Touch gloves if you wish, and let's do this. Usman wants to earn Hassan's respect on the feet, but then use some well-timed takedowns. They feel like Hassan overextends on his strikes because he tries to hit too hard at times. But I believe it was episode one, Hassan was already calling out Usman. A very nice scramble there. 
three there on the inside, and another one for good measure by Usman. Yeah, Hassan doing his best to keep his hips away from Usman. A nice takedown there from Usman. Hassan's got to be careful when he scrambles. Gives up his back now. Either way, this is putting a tremendous amount of pressure on the arms of Haider Hassan. Usman could just suffocate you, and he's so athletic, and he's learning so fast. And again, repeated takedowns. Cross the right hook. Two more rounds. Round two now between High and Hassan and Kamal Usman. Usman got hurt by that uppercut. Ah, and Hassan got too aggressive there. Usman's got the setup for an arm triangle choke here. Well, as far as Usman may be able to finish this. They don't come much bigger than Haider Hassan. Looked like a tap. That's there. it. Kamaru Usman comes up huge for the Black Stallions. I told you. I told you. And Kamaru Usman possesses just that. And we could hear here cage side how hard it was for Haider Hassan to breathe. And eventually he had to tap her. He was going unconscious. Kamaru, the Nigerian nightmare. You guys win $300,000, the ultimate fighter trophy, and you win a brand new Harley Davidson motorcycle. Congratulations, you guys. You know, it was a long road. I've been working so hard for this, and my manager believed in me when most didn't. And, uh, you know, I'm glad he decided to, to trust me and trust, put me in a position for me to go out and represent my team and get the job done because I knew I could get the job done for us. Well, this night belongs to you and the Black Zillions. Your team gets $300,000, the trophy you own tonight and the season. Congratulations. Enjoy the win. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Kamaru Usman.